Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, May 9th. Okay, so we have the moon in Gemini all day, which means that we're looking for answers. We are looking for stimulation. We are looking for aha moments. We're looking for clarity. The Gemini energy rules over the mental plane, but of course the moon rules over our heart space. And so we are attempting to get our heart and our head in alignment here, especially with the new options, the new opportunities that are starting to present themselves now that we're moving out of the new moon energy and we're starting to see the hints, the clues of a new path, a new direction, a new goal, new vision, new dream actually start to materialize. So curiosity is peaked. We are coming out of our shells a little bit. We're looking to the outside world for stimulation and that is how light bulb moments absolutely pop off. So there are seven different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The one that does not involve the moon is between Mercury and Uranus. Okay, so Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Aries energy is very forward thinking. We have no want, need, or desire to look back. We are starting to piece things together. We are starting to kind of build in a momentum with the rapid processing of ideas, of different variables, of different experiences. The beautiful thing is, is that Uranus, the great awakener who is in Taurus energy, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury meaning Uranus kind of connects us with the higher realms of intelligence, our higher selves, if you will. This is where the epiphanies, the aha moments kind of pop off. And then Mercury, who rules over the lower level of our intellect, is able to actually like logically and practically sort through these aha moments, these downloads, this level of awareness. And we're able to kind of piece things together in a way that works for us, that we're able to bring to life, that we're able to actually formulate a plan, a strategy and actually start working with it. So, of course, the highest form of our intellect, the lower form of our intellect, they're in alignment. They're working together. The Taurus energy that Uranus is currently in is stabilizing. So we're not kind of, you know, getting carried away with ourselves. We actually are operating in a realistic framework of what could be possible for us. And of course, the Aries energy that Mercury is in just wants to jump into something new, wants to be aggressive with those thoughts, want to piece something together so that we can eventually start taking action and making moves in our physical realm based off of the ideas, based off of the plan, the strategy that we're currently piecing together. So definitely a little bit of pressure in the mental plane. Aha moments are popping off. Those downloads are definitely starting to be realized and we will be exploring different topics, different themes as we kind of piece a new path, new plan, new strategy together. The moon in Gemini energy is going to semi-square, creating tension and conflict with Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer in this Aries energy. This is the new version of self that we are trying to get comfortable and familiar with. This is an epiphany, if you will, where the new version of self still has a few, let's call them insecurities, doubts. The moon, of course, in this Gemini energy, trying to rapidly process the old versus the new. The Gemini energy is very dualistic, very polarized. So one foot very much still stuck in the past. The other foot very much stuck in the future. We have our ego self versus our higher self. And the whole point is to find a middle point, to find a new common ground. Now, this is definitely going to expose where it is that we're not feeling so hot, not feeling so cool, confident about where it is that we are going, especially with our abilities to actually create something new, our preparedness, if you will, to jump into new chapters. This is like a stepping back and questioning whether or not we're actually feeling well equipped and well prepared in this new version of self to actually start moving forward. The moon is then going to sextile Mars. This is a beautiful interaction. This is going to help us kind of break out of that questioning, those doubts, those insecurities. This is going to put some confidence back in us. This is going to really tap us into some boldness, some bravery, some courage that we're going to have to have in order to kind of face the first set of challenges, the first set of obstacles as we go ahead and start kind of initiating this new path and moving forward. The moon 
our emotional realm and Mars ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire. He's in his rulership. He's ready to boss up. He's ready to act upon the alignment between our heart and our head. And so this is A, a positive narrative that we're now building within us. B, some inspiration that we're now kind of getting excited about. And C, this is really just building the inner realm of confidence, the inner realm of courage that we're going to need to tap into this warrior type of mood and attitude that Mars lends us to actually start moving forward. So this is a beautiful interaction. This is going to put a lot of momentum in our mood and our attitude and in our thought process. The moon is going to semi-square Mercury though. So again, just as we're kind of building ourselves up, just as we're starting to feel confident, just as we're starting to see where it is that we do have options and opportunities to actually move forward, suddenly we're stepping back, we're questioning. Now Mercury rules over the Gemini energy that the moon is in. Mercury, of course, still in his post-retrograde shadow period until the 13th. So we're still trying very hard to piece things together to make sense of what it is that we're supposed to be concentrated and focused on at this time basically our heart space the moon our head space mercury they're not on the same page and for good reason uh, the reason being of course is that we still have a lot of answers that we need we still have a lot of information and details that we're going to have to kind of pool together before we're going to feel confident enough well informed enough if you will to make a choice to make a decision to take action to make moves and so although there is this, you know, rapid urgency in our mental plane to just choose to decide so that we can move on, we can jump into something new. Emotionally speaking, we're still trying to weigh the pros and cons. Again, the dualistic polarized nature of Gemini energy has us very much listing the pros, listing the cons, and then weeding our way out, if you will, and kind of bridging the gap of distance between where it is that we're highlighted to some pros and where it is that we're highlighted to some cons. Again, we have to get the heart and head in alignment and agreement before we can engage the physical body to take action and make moves. We're not there yet. The moon in Gemini then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune in his place of power in this Pisces energy. Now, I love this interaction between Pisces energy and Gemini energy because the Pisces energy is very mystical, very imaginative, very creative, very spiritual, very intuitive, very inspiring. The Gemini energy is operating from a logical, practical standpoint. So we are able to kind of grasp a vision, a goal, a dream in our highest realm when we align with our higher self. And we're able to figure out, due to the logic and practicality that the Gemini energy is lending us, what it is that we can do to start plan, planning, strategizing, to bring this baby to life, to actually bring forth the, let's call it cornerstone foundation of the structure needed in order to dream to build our dreams upon and so there is this little bit i'm going to say of inner chatter of really kind of exploring and expanding upon the goals the visions the dreams that our higher self wants us to pursue this is huge creative energy that we're going to be able to start making sense of the moon and Gemini then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in her rulership in this Taurus energy, giving us a stabilized energy to get in touch with our heart space to kind of figure out who and what in our lives are contributing to our happiness, our joy, our safety, our security, and who is not, and really kind of shifting, reprioritizing our worth, our values, our relationship dynamics. So this is a positive interaction, definitely going to put us in a situation where, again, we're weighing the pros and cons of certain, let's call them aspects, elements in our physical realm, especially where relationships are concerned and where money matters are concerned. Now, we are building in new wants, needs and desires. But again, those new wants, needs and desires are going to require a different action from us. And right now, we're just trying to visualize the different options, the different opportunities, the different variables that we could definitely take action upon and what that would mean for an eventual consequence impacting our physical realm, impacting our happiness, impacting our relationship dynamics and our finances as well. 
The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Gemini energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So that north node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on this solo independent quest for our soul's evolution, for our soul's mission, our soul's purpose. We have some life lessons that we have to kind of go out in the world and experience. But again, our resistance, our hesitancy to break away from some of those relationship dynamics that have become a little bit too dependent, too intertwined, too attached to us, preventing us from doing what we have to do for our own damn selves. Now, the moon interacting with the North Node in this way is definitely putting us in a situation where a lot of the ideas, a lot of the options, a lot of the opportunities are now becoming more favorable over the other. And so emotionally speaking, we're starting to lean into one choice, one decision, one path, one direction over the other. We're still not 100% convinced. We're still not 100% prepared and ready to take action and make moves. But the exploration of these ideas, of these topics, of these themes, of these potential paths, there is a more favorable choice point. We're starting to make sense of it. We're starting to expand on the information, the knowledge that we need to have to feel informed enough to actually pursue this option, this path, this direction.